Hello again, Gary Stearman. It is the 16th of April. This is a Monday and we are going to start a new week with an old report. I wanted to go back and remind you about something that happened on Easter Sunday, or it began to happen on Easter Sunday, April 8th. I consider this to be one of the most important happenings in the Middle East, and it's little reported uh, in these days of hot politics and hotter re-election arguments. The Persian Gulf gets page 18, but uh, here we have a situation that took place on Easter Sunday. At least 200 American and Arab Gulf fighter bombers thundered overhead at the outset of the biggest Air Force exercise ever conducted in the Gulf region. Ever conducted in the Gulf region. Uh, they are simulating war with Iran and an operation for reopening the strategic Straits of Hormuz if it is closed by Tehran. Military sources report that of 100 uh, warplanes that took off from the USS Enterprise and the USS Abraham Lincolns, uh, they are cruising with, uh, by the way, their strike groups opposite Iranian shores, and they're still there uh, to this day, This, although this report comes from April the 9th, the day after the Easter Sunday exercises. Here's the interesting thing. We have the USS Enterprise, the USS uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln cruising with their strike groups. They're operating in conjunction with Saudi, Kuwaiti, and Bahraini air forces, uh, which contributed another hundred jets to the operation. This is an unprecedented military show of the United States with the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, and Kuwait. Uh, in an unprecedented show of military solidarity, uh, the U.S. 5th Fleet High Command uh, was also chosen by the Gulf Cooperation Council, members for their unified exercise headquarters to be located on the Sheikh Issa Air Base. Now, the point of all this is that the United States it has become extremely solid with the Arabs on the east coast uh, of the Arabian Peninsula, just adjacent to where all that oil flows through the Persian Gulf. And we have that exact situation reflected in Scripture. And this, to me, is so important because in our key scripture in Ezekiel 38, during the great northern invasion, we come to verse 13, and it says, Sheba, Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish with all the young lions thereof shall say unto thee, that is, to the northern invader, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey? Well, the northern invader, of course, is Persia in league with Russia, chiefly accompanied by other nations, but Persia and Russia uh, provide the bulk of the operation. They are deadly opposed to the United Arab Emirates, to Dubai, to Kuwait, which is also in league with the uh, so-called merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof. Now, the merchants of Tarshish are well identified in Ezekiel 20. Uh, 7 through 29, <clears throat> as what? As the Western traders. And we have in Ezekiel chapter uh, uh, 27, Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches. With silver, iron, tin, and lead, they traded in thy fairs. In other words, the 29th chapter of uh, Ezekiel goes into great detail to establish who these merchants are, and they are none other than the Western Alliance or the Western trader, traders of the latter days who are themselves destroyed later on. But before that, in Ezekiel 38, they are allied with the United Arab Emirates, with Kuwait, with Bahrain, and, and other Arab traders, uh, oil dealers specifically, and so we have here in the 13th verse of Ezekiel 38, Sheba and Dedan. Now the house of Al-Sabah, which is the uh, Kuwaiti government, uh, was once called Sheba. 
Dedan, the, the Dodanim, were once the southern Arabians. So you put Sheba and Dedan together, you have uh, the latter-day dwellers of the, in the Arabian Peninsula allied with the merchants of Tarshish. Who would they be? They would be the West, the, the uh, Europeans, specifically English, British Petroleum, and others. They would be America, Occidental Petroleum, and, and all the other uh, petroleum developers and exporters operating in league with the Arab sheiks as they have been since uh, the mid-30s of the last century. And so you have here a power block, the United States, the Western Allies, with the Arabs. And I, I would uh, once again remind you of what we were reading about Easter Sunday of this year, at least 200 American and Arab Gulf fighter bombers thundered overhead on Sunday, April 8th, that's Easter Sunday, at the outset of the biggest Air Force exercise ever conducted in the Gulf region. To me, as one who literally uh, reads and attempts to understand Bible prophecy, we, this is a very, very clear indicator that we are on the edge of seeing the fulfillment of Ezekiel 38, 13. Now we come forward just a little bit. I have a new uh, news release, and, and this one was uh, dated uh, or datelined April 13th. And the headline is, Obama's election politics empowers Iran, North Korea, and Syria before the Istanbul talks. Now, uh, there are peace talks, Middle East peace talks, scheduled to take place in Istanbul. But a lot of people are dragging their feet. Let me read a couple of uh, passages out of this news release. In their different ways, quote, the rulers of Iran, North Korea, and Syria this week tried to throw U.S. President Barack Obama off balance by exploiting the foreign policy balls that he's juggling uh, to win the November election. A combination of tough talk and maneuvers, avoiding military confrontation. Paragraph 2, Wednesday, April 11th. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad chose Abu Musa Island near the Strait of Hormuz to offer the Arab Gulf rulers a piece of advice. And here's a quote from Ahmadinejad. They should uh, take a look at a map of Iran so they understand about which great and powerful society they are talking. And so the boasting started. All this in response to the airborne military exercises of Easter Sunday. The Iranians have come back and said, uh, we're going to close up the Strait of Hormuz if you continue this operation. And by the way, uh, he, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad mentions Abu Musa Island. Uh, check your map. Look down to the south end of the Persian Gulf, and uh, that island could very well be used to stage an Iranian event uh, that could well close import-exports of oil and goods through the Strait of Hormuz. And so this is what we have going on right now. Started on April 8th, Easter Sunday, with a, a, a very big show, uh, a United uh, Arab Republic, uh, Western Alliance uh, show of force with two aircraft carrier strike groups. Uh, did that stock stop Mahmoud Ahmadinejad from... Uh, uh, from continuing on his pathway to support Syria against the United States and, and in league with Russia? No, it did not. <laughs> He's moving forward with all possible speed, and so is the West. And that's the point that I wanted to make, because tensions continue to build as we watch the Persian Gulf, as we watch Israel, as we watch Syria, uh, it's amazing what's going on today. Uh, it, it's spine-chilling and hair-raising uh, if you fear World War III. Well, that's what's happening now. So, uh, you know, times can be shorter than we think. Keep looking up.